Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to an analysis of the December leader pack in the Civilization VI leader pass. So yesterday, three more leaders were released. Tokugawa Suleiman, uh, the Mutezem alternative, and Nader Shah for Persia. Suleiman, of course, being for the Ottoman Empire. And I think I want to start off by talking about Japan. Japan is insane, the new one. So if you don't know, Tokugawa has the basic Japanese bonuses, right? You've got Meiji Restoration, which gives all of your districts a standard adjacency bonus for being adjacent to another district. That means, for example, if you put an industrial zone adjacent to a city center, that industrial zone gets plus one. If you put a, I don't know, theater square next to two industrial zones, the theater square gets plus two, and each of the industrial zones gets plus one. Very, very powerful ability, very good. Allows for a, a very different play style as Japan. They also get the Samurai, which is a pretty decent mid-game unit. You can do some pretty interesting timing attacks with the Samurai and the Electronics Factory that gives you plus four culture to the city after researching the electricity technology. I call it a pretty okay building. It's, you know, if you're going for an industrial zone, it's nice to get something a little bit extra out of it. I wouldn't call this amazing. Um, but I think Japan is a save that can go for an industrial zone build, particularly if you get your hands on the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, as well as Leonardo da Vinci to get yourself that extra little bit of culture from the workshops. But the really important ability here for Japan is the Baku Han for Tokugawa. International trade routes receive minus 25% yield in tourism, but your domestic trade routes gain plus one culture and plus one science and plus two gold for every specialty district at the destination. This gives Japan an absurd, absurd ability to tech. Because the crazy thing about this is, you don't even need to build theater squares and campuses as Japan to have a really strong game. You can just straight up go harbors, you can go commercial hubs. I really want to play Japan in a Secret Societies game, which is probably going to be the first game I play, and do an Elza Minerva build, where I never build a theater square or a campus, and I try to win a tourism victory just from that style of play. It, 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 like Japan is ridiculously good. Like, it's insane. Um, now, you do miss out on the... I think it's Hojo, Hojo's ability where you can build certain districts twice as fast, but that doesn't matter. They, they, like this trade route thing is absurd. Let's say you build up your capital um, with like, I don't know, a harbor, a government plaza and a diplomatic quarter. So baseline, that city is giving you three food, three production. This ability means it'll also give you six gold and three culture and science. Like that inter that level of internal trade route is insane. You put Magnus in that city with the plus food promotion. Now it's five food, three production. Like it's genuinely, this Civ's abilities are completely insane. Like completely insane. I played like a small test game with them. This is the save I am most excited to play. This save is genuinely busted. It's busted, it's bussin', it's insane, it's ridiculous, it's so much fun. I can't wait to play Japan and really show off their power. Um, yeah, I would say Japan instantaneously gets launched into S tier because of their district adjacency, because of their internal trade routes. Just a super good save. I love to see this kind of ability. Really, really cool. Big fan of this. Then we've got Suleiman, who I would say is quite good. Not busted like Japan. Um, now, he, he has like the normal Turkish abilities, right? He's got the Great Turkish Bombard. He builds siege units faster. His siege units are stronger. Conquered cities don't lose population. Cities not founded by the Ottomans gain amenities and loyalty. They've also got the Grand Bazaar, which accumulates extra strategic resources. I think it's a replacement for the bank. And you get an extra amenity for every luxury the city has improved. Wait. Okay, for a second there, I thought better balanced game had improved. I don't remember them buffing the Ottomans like this. But yeah, the Ottomans are capable of getting a ton of amenities, capable of getting a ton of strategic resources, and then you add in the magnificent, magnificent ability, right? 15% science and culture when you're in a golden age or a heroic age. Now, to put that in perspective, that would be like having Pingala established in every single city in your empire. That's like having the um, Kilwa Kisawani and having both uh, scientific and cultural bonuses activated across your entire empire. This is a ridiculously good ability. Uh, to the point where I feel like if you're not golden aging as Suleiman, uh, you're probably messing up. At least if you're simming. Now, if you want to go to war, you want to use the second half of this ability, right? Where you go to a normal or dark age because you get plus four combat strength against other civilizations who are in normal or dark age. Normal, norm, who aren't in heroic ages, essentially. Who aren't in golden ages. Um, really, really flexible. Really, really powerful. 
um, actually kind of lines up with a really strong timing in the game where you go, where you try to go classical golden age, medieval golden age, renaissance golden age, industrial dark age. If you go that build, the if, if you can pull that off as the Ottomans, you will actually be able to completely wipe the map in the industrial era. Like, I'm not even joking. It's absurd how good of a timing you can pull off with this guy. I'm really excited to play him. I really want to try to do an industrial um, normal slash dark age push. I'm kind of excited the idea of like going for a quick religion to get the era score. And then you move into a few wonders and then you, you stack off the science and culture from that. And then you push in the industrial era with a normal or dark age using... Uh, your superior science and culture. Very excited to do that because like you could probably have maybe cuirassiers and uh, cores by then with this science and culture. So you could you could just have, you, you're unstoppable at that point and you have extra strong siege units at that point too. A couple of bombards. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's much you could do against a well-played Ottoman player. Now, we also have Nader Shah who is the uh, new Persian leader. And in the light of Japan's abilities, their old ability satrapies is starting to look a little bit faded, right? Where you get plus one trade route capacity, a political philosophy. You also get two gold and two uh, plus one, two plus two gold and plus one culture for trade routes between your own cities. They don't scale. Um, the one nice thing is you do get extra roads, but like just in, in comparison to the Japanese bonus, satrapies is now like outdated. The Immortal is still a really decent early game attack unit but it kind of requires you a to find iron and then b to have someone within range for you to attack which is often the limiting factor for these swordsman unique units um because oftentimes if you have somebody close enough for you to attack them your start is really bad and then if you don't have anyone close enough for you to attack them your start is really good and you don't need to do a timing attack so i felt like the immortal is a unit that is also overshadowed by the man at arms too so persia is feeling a little bit weak now the pirate Isa, i think is a really really good building especially because it gives appeal uh it gives culture it gives gold and it can scale off of holy sites theater squares commercial hubs and city centers so it has a lot of power there but this leader is what i would consider to be the he's 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 a bit of a lame duck in this leader pack i think he's a little bit weak right plus five combat strength when attacking full health units okay sure um you're maybe you're maybe gonna maybe one shot another unit every now and again you're maybe gonna get a really strong start to a fight yeah i don't know if that's really good enough um now if this was like plus 10 combat strength when attacking full health units or maybe even plus seven now we're talking in the territory or like i would say plus eight actually if it was plus eight now we're talking in the territory of a bonus where this will have a significant impact on the game uh cities not founded by nether shaw also received plus two faith and plus three gold on domestic trade routes i just i again because of the way swordsman unique units work by the time this bonus is kicking in for you unless you get extremely lucky and you can conquer like a really early city state which usually isn't possible on deity because city states form walls you're not really going to get much use out of this ability now where i do think that this ability shines is in multiplayer in multiplayer civ 6 this this ability could do a lot of work especially because you can often kill those early city states you can often uh, make use of of the plus five combat strength against full health units very often because players are more likely to try to keep their units at full health. Players are more likely to defend and all that sort of stuff. So I do think Persia is definitely a sieve now that plays better online. But then again, is this guy as good as Persia, the other Persia's ability? I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think this guy needs like, he needs like a little something extra. I feel like he needs a little bit of something extra to be on the same level as the other two. And I think Tokugawa is just insane. Like, it's hard to be on his level because he's just ridiculous. What I will say as well, though, in addition to these new leaders, we actually got some very interesting patch notes. So the developers haven't specified exactly how they've changed the game, but they have addressed a few of the community concerns. So one of the big ones is they've addressed a number of reported crash and stability issues, and the AI no longer has a massive bias towards science to the detriment of all of the yields. I have noticed in like the last year or two, while the AI, AI has generally performed a little bit better, like in an overall capacity in terms of their ability to keep up with the player in terms of science and put pressure on the player, the AI has definitely underperformed in doing literally anything else. Uh, they don't perform religion very well. They don't produce an army very well. They don't make much money. Um, reliable strategies that used to work against the AI have just kind of gone by the wayside. So I'm really glad to see this by it shaved back slightly. Now, a couple of other things is that there's some reports like the correct music was sometimes blocked from playing. Um, 
The last best West for Wilfred Laurier was bug fixed. It now gives plus two production instead of plus one production for snow mines and tundra hills. Uh, one of the biggest bugs in the game was the culture industry policy card that was causing like a massive game breaking bug has been fixed. We've also got um, you know a couple of minor text and balance tweaks and polish and stuff like that around the place. But what this says to me is we have four months, okay? Two, the first two leader passes have already come. We have four months to get all of the problems with the game addressed, right? Because I, I don't know if there will be more content after this. I was pretty confident that they would put out one more piece of patchwork, one more piece of content. And this is kind of them tying a bow on the game and getting it put to rest. Um, so really super important. Get on Reddit, get on Twitter, get on the 2K support uh, website and start sending in all of the problems with the game, all of the bugs that need to be fixed, all of the issues, get them sent to the developers because I don't think we're going to get another patch after April. I think April is going to be the end of the game. So really, really important to you guys. Do go ahead, comment on this video. Let me know what issues with the game you'd like to see fixed. Comment on the Reddit. Comment, get everywhere you can. Talk about the problems with the game because the developers can use that feedback and fix the game. And then we can, you know, essentially live out Civilization VI's sunset uh, into 2023 and see what 2024 will hold for us. Yeah, I, I would I would be shocked if we didn't see an announcement for something in the Civ franchise by the end of 2024. But I think that's kind of where I'm, I'm drawing the line. I, I don't think we'll see it much before that. So please, yes, go play the pack. Enjoy it. Have fun. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.